Problem number two, we've got the challenge of a collapsed exchange rate. The parallel market rate, Madam Speaker, ma'am, is over one is to uh, to eight hundred. A few days ago, it was one is to one thousand to two hundred. The third problem which we have, Madam Speaker, ma'am, are disposable incomes. Public servants are being paid paltry incomes which are not reflective of the reality out there. There is no another better product that can be used as a store of value other than gold. The economy has come off the rails. Prices are going up and people are beginning to fear the 20, 2008 scenario where shops ran dry, salaries or earnings became useless and many had to survive on cross-border trading. Now we are in 2023 and it appears that we are playing back the reel of time. Government has issued stern warnings against business but prices continue to go up. The local currency again is failing to hold. Now we are looking at what is causing this. We are looking for the answers. Here on this, the free talk with me your host as usual, Dara B. We are going to be talking about the economy, the prices, and your salary. Join me after this break. Welcome back to this, the Free Talk in Power Partnership with the Frederick Newman Foundation for Freedom, where we bring you the so what. We make you understand the issues that are affecting you and your pocket. Now, here on this, the Free Talk, this evening I am joined by Professor Mgano, an economist, who is going to be telling us what is happening to our economy. Now, thank you very much, and thank you for having us, uh, Professor. It's my honor, uh, Dara. Good to see you. Beautiful. Now, just before we, we start looking for the answers, let's just talk about what is really happening what is the state of the economy as we speak? Uh, the economy is in the graveyard right now. 
we are mourning the death of the Zimbabwean dollar. We are mourning the death of our wages. We are mourning the death of our capital in business. There's serious erosion on capital as the rest are running away. Um, it's a mess and it's a crisis. Um, and uh, I'm not surprised where we are today because I always want to refer you to my analysis uh, when I was provided them on my Twitter handle of 25 November 2022. I made it very clear that uh, by June, uh, the rate will be over 1.5, inflation will be over 400%. Uh, I was analyzing the budget. I know we are going to go into detail of what are the drivers, so why, why are we where we are. But the, sh the summer of where we are is that we are in the graveyard. Uh, any time from now, we'll be uh, bearing the same dollar. We, we've been, we've been we, are, we are out of moisture, right? Actually, <laughs> we had the graveyard. We, we've, we've been down this road before, mm. and, and we are going back. Yeah. Is, it, is this a situation of re history repeating itself, or of our political leaders learning nothing? Yeah. And forgetting nothing. I like I like the way you are asking the question, uh, blessed. Um, you are opening remarks was quite pertinent. Pertinent that uh, you are saying that uh, government gave a stern warning to business. And then the question now: Are our political leaders learning something? I think the answer is no. They are not learning anything. Because if I am a policymaker. I will act like a medical doctor who diagnose the problem and then be able to drive the root causes and uh, pr provide a prescription uh, which is going to address the ailment. Uh, government has got a significant stake in this mess. If I was going to put it on a scale, it would be CISO. What does it mean? Government will be heavy material. You know, in a CISO, Business will be up there. Actually, it's a lighter material, and the government will be heavy. Um, why am I saying so? Our challenge is very simple. It's a monetary phenomena. Who drives money supply? Who drives liquidity? It's government. So as long as we are saying blame game to business, I'm not saying business are angels. We'll come back to them. But you don't blame someone who is now... Uh, setting a, a survival strategy to survive the mess created by money supply. That, that, that's, a, that's a different level which we'll be talking about. You don't blame someone who is trying to avoid exchange rate disparities uh, which are costing the business uh, by selling in the informal sector to drive sales against a market which has got a depressed demand. Yet we were telling government to have a properly functioning auction system, and they did not address it. So our government, I'm sorry to say, and I'm saying deliberately, I know this is a very popular program, and I want them to hear me out. We, I, I will shed more light as we discuss that government has got a significant share of blame. The share coming from business is a reactionary to government policies. Now, now... You, you are talking about reactionary to government policies. Mm -hmm. um, I've been following some, some debate coming from, from government and, and those close to government. Mm -hmm. They are accusing business of accessing cheap money on the auction, um, on the auction system. After accessing that cheap money, they then pretend as if they are selling or buying goods. Um, they're buying forex on the black market and therefore are accelerating inflation okay so the auction system does not provide sufficient foreign currency to business uh, to transact uh, the current statistics shows that uh, four billion dollars has been um, uh, issued out on the auction yes you, you recall that the auction system was launched in, in july 2020 mm -hmm. Right, um, so that's half year. On average, we import goods worth seven to eight billion dollars a year. So, if we say 2020 June, July, half a year, 
it means that at the part of the year we, we imported $4 billion. 2021, let's say $8 billion. We have $12 billion, right? 2022, $8 billion. We have $20 billion. Now, we are in June. We are almost half year. And let's say our imports are around $4 billion. So we're talking about $24 billion of imports. But the government has issued uh, $4 billion. So where is the $20 billion coming from? So the answer is that the auction system is insignificant in as far as providing in foreign currency uh, to businesses concerned. They mobilize it on the black market and they have to do replacement pricing. What it means, they have to price at a correct exchange rate, which is the black market rate, for them to be able to go back in the market. Uh, to make it easy pay, for pay year, right? Government is allocating 20 million a, a week. There are 52 weeks in a, in a year, which takes it to a billion uh, dollars, 20 million in a year, allocated by Central Bank, right? Now, where is the $6 billion coming from pay, 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 pay year? Because this is now the difference out of, if I, say, if I take 7 billion as a, uh, I mean, 80 billion, that, that would be 7 billion actually, the, 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 the balance. So the discourse, uh, the argument that the auction system has been addressing issues and the business is listening, it's not a fair one. I, would, I remember the president in one of the local media, public media, he actually wrote about the uh, auction paradox. And in that auction paradox, he raised the concerns that there are some people who are getting foreign currency and they were stashing this money in a, in a, in an offshore, right? Um, I'm, I'm assuming that it was advised by the, the intelligence. But if you look at those people who are getting money, I would want to argue, they are not only bona fide business people. These are people who are connected. So the real business sector did not get much. That's why you see your Delta beverage, for example, when you look at the, uh, the reports from Central Bank, you don't see them featuring on the allocation of foreign currency. But it's doing well uh, using its own uh, foreign currency, which is generated. So it tells you that the auction system is not quite an efficient market for allocation of foreign currency in this country. And it can't be used as an excuse that the price should be stabilizing. But, but look at it this way, Doc. Um, the Zimstats produced uh, a report that around 70 to 80 percent of local transactions mm -hmm. are now in United States dollars. Mm -hmm. So, w why are we still talking about the black market for, 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 for the 20 percent sales? Right. Uh, the 70 percent, let's say 80 percent is in US dollars, right? Those sales. But uh, don't forget that uh, civil servants. Uh, got a share of the 52% of the budget, national budget, right? And uh, they are facing a market. So is other workers in the private sector. They get significant share of their salaries in what? In Zim dollar. So I'm starting on the, on the workers. And these workers are facing 80% market used to rest. Where do they get their foreign currency to buy? And when they go to the informal sector, it's 100%. So the black market is still exists because you have a significant amount of Zim dollars which are going to save for savings, which are in Zim dollars. Now, the second aspect that there's a statutory instrument, it should be SI33, where businesses have to comply in having dual prices. And the former sector, which constitutes 20% of the economy, still have to collect Zim dollars because if they refuse to, they will be arrested. So don't underestimate 20% as an insignificant share. Because 20% of an elephant is different from a 20% of a rate, 100% of a rate. So what am I saying? I'm saying the former sector, uh, by any imagination of numbers on how much money, uh, money supply in the system, uh, the s volumes they, they drive, look at how much data is sold in terms of beer, as an example, right? And uh, they have to have two prices. Uh, the, this 20% is still quite a significant share. Uh, if it was 2%, then we are talking different gap. Now, now, let's talk about these two prices. Are they working in our economy? They are not working. They are not working. It's like water and electricity. They will not work. Um, that's why you see that the results which you are getting, that the price of Zim dollar are running away. The US dollar is stable. And uh, this is where we have a challenge where you have um, um, yeah, what accountants call uh, international accounting standard number 29. Uh, which is called accounting in hyperinflation, All right? So when you are in a very ha cr uh, chronic inflation, hyperinflation, 
uh, economic agents, which is you and me and businesses, always uh, go, pounce their, he their hands on the uh, uh, stable currents. Uh, they will price in a, they, will, uh, they, they, they negotiate deals uh, indexing using a stable currents. So you are creating a problem and you'll never be able to solve it by having uh, two parallel pr prices. Yeah. Now, now, now as, as we sp speak about these prices, government has also uh, started allowing uh, National Employment Council mm -hmm. to peg salaries in USD, mm -hmm. which are payable in other TGS mm -hmm. let's, let's look at the rationale of that. Government would want to continue to promote the use of Zimbabwean dollar. Uh, clearly because, um, look, I will be very honest with you. In as much as we are dollarizing, uh, the, the high costs of dollarization, uh, your liquidity challenges, the challenges of um, competitiveness, we we'll find it difficult to export. Uh, so those are real things. So government would want to hold on to Zim dollar and hopefully that uh, this currency will, will survive uh, the barrier. But unfortunately, uh, they, I think they missed the, 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 the opportunity. Uh, I had the privilege of attending a session in Parliament, uh, budget, pre-budget consultations uh, in, uh, in Victoria Falls in November 2021, late October 2021. I was a discussant to the Minister of Finance and the Governor of Central Bank's uh, presentation. And I made a submission to the Minister of Finance that uh, uh, if you want to save your local currency, Zimbabwean dollar, uh, make sure that it all the budget is in Zim dollar, all the taxes and the statutory obligations are in Zim dollar. So if someone wants to pay value-added tax, uh, should pay it in Zim dollar. Uh, pay Zim dollar. Everything which goes into the government coffer, whether Zimura, whether duty, import duty, Zim dollar. But they allow the market to use Zim, US dollar. Because that's what they want. But you say, you want US dollar, have it. But when you are coming to me as government, you are going to be paying everything in, in Zim dollar. If government is paying for services to contractors, if you want to do work with me, I will pay in Zim dollar. That's what I told the Minister of Finance. And my argument was very simple. that uh, the, There's no way a business will, 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 will have to disperse the Zim dollar once it comes to your account. But still want to pay that. Still want to pay pay. Still want to pay NASA and ADLF and Zimra. So... The Minister of Finance said, I cannot queue to the office of the governor to get foreign currency. I want my foreign currency. So he missed the opportunity. And you know, uh, Putin, when he was given sanctions uh, by the Western world, he said he's going to promote the use of a ruble. And the, the ruble was crashing and it gained momentum. Because the European would want to buy gas from Putin and say, pay using the ruble. So it is performing very well. And you know, I think just last week, uh, I'm sure you saw the Minister of Finance now pronouncing new measures. And he gave a piecemeal approach to the use of the Zim dollar to say payment of levies uh, and the other uh, prices, such uh, uh, requirement to government agencies should be in Zim dollar. But he did not say taxes, duty, passport, even fuel in government garages. He was silent. So it's a, it's a piecemeal. Now, you see the challenge it does. If you are sick of whatever ailment and are given a, a, a prescription and a medication and you choose some pills and you don't take the whole uh, package, you will not recover. So they are trying to, to encourage Zim dollar, but they are taking a piecemeal approach. And that is why I've told you that we will bury the Zim dollar because the instruments being given by government are not sufficient. But is it, is it not too late? Is it too late or not too late to save the Zim dollar at, at the point that we are? We have price, um, one US dollar is now equivalent to 4,000 RTGs. Mm -hmm. and, and we can see um, there was a receipt uh, going around uh, from the shop of the Deputy Minister of Industry and Trade, mm -hmm. uh, Maharaj. Okay. And one loaf of bread mm -hmm which is normally a dollar, was selling for 3500 mm -hmm. in his shop. That is what I like. I mean, I, that's a very good example, which tells you survival strategy. It's a survival strategy where it's too late. And I like that you made reference to a policymaker. You see, on one hand, he is in the Ministry of Industry and Commerce. The Ministry of Industry and Commerce is blaming business, but he is part of the ministry. But when he is the other side in business, he is facing 
the primary objective why a business exists. A business exists to make a profit, not to make losses. So he's doing, he's trying to save his business. He's also a director in court because, of course, I know he's a government minister. So they say he can be a director, but technically he's the owner, he's a director. And directors has got a fiduciary role to protect um, money and assets. So it's too late because if moral suasion would have worked, he was supposed to lead by example. But in business, sometimes what, what, what leads the way is, is, is the primary objective why you're existing. Why is it going, well, why are we too late? The current levels of money supply in the economy is toxic. The current levels of liquidity in the market is, is so massive that um, and the government is paying contractors in Zim dollar and they pay them in huge amounts. So how do you stop the uh, running away of the rate? And that's why I said from the beginning, this is a monetary phenomena. And you've, got, you've got gold coins, you've got uh, digitally backed gold currency, and uh, is this not helping in stabilizing somewhat the Zim dollar? So, blessed, you know that uh, from the beginning, even in our last show, some point in time, I mentioned gold coins. I think Pesu was there. And I, I said it very clearly that uh, these gold coins will not work. My argument was very simple. Gold coins, we, we, gold contributes about 45% of foreign currency requirement. So we can't tamper much with gold. But if we print more gold coins to move money in the market, we are also restricting our earnings in foreign currency. So we have more problems which are going to come through. That is why you saw that since gold coins were introduced, I think last year, it's almost a year now, we have just been able to mop, mop out $35 billion. So what is $35 billion against to close to $4 trillion RTGS in the market? What is, what is that? It's insignificant. Why government is now introducing gold tokens? Because gold coins are not being acquit acquitted uh, by people who have bought them after maturity, after six months. It's the real gold. And uh, an external evidence shows that uh, people are even putting it in a bullion like bars uh, as a safe investment. And you see that even the statement made by the governor of Central Bank after having introduced a gold token they said that um, those who are holding physical gold coins can change them whenever it is convenient for them how do you say that how do you say that whenever it is convenient for them where, where, where is the six month it means they can uh, they can wait for jesus christ to come and change the gold coin now the, what, what what is gold to token gold token is a replica of, of gold, gold, gold coin but now you can't hold the physical gold coin because they want now to keep the gold as, as a reserve which is the opportunity they missed, right? And um, you are now asking me to hold a token and I give you my, my money. And we have experience of uh, 2016, the bond note, where we were told that the central bank had mobilized about $250 million from AfroX in bank. And uh, they have a backup uh, to pay, to beg the bond note, which was being introduced. But uh, you realize that uh, when this, this, the, the system failed, no one was compensated uh, uh, those bond, 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 bond notes. And um, how, how, how then do you think that the people who still remember how they have lost their bond, uh, their investment out of holding the bond note and with the hope that they'll be given a compensation or there's, there's, there's an underlying asset covering, who believe that the gold behind Central Bank they are using from the royalties they are building will be there. They will be given that money. So we have a trust issues here. Uh, we have a drought of confidence uh, with the system. So gold token, yes, I've seen that the first sale they sold about uh, uh, $14 billion. And you hear policymakers saying that um, there was overwhelming endorsement. But uh, break it down. Show us who bought the gold token. You might see that there are very few players who are buying it who are politically connected because they know that they have a muscle to take those, uh, uh, their money when time comes. And obviously they are leveraging on the arbitrage opportunities because the rate at 1.5 against 4,000 and they can change one dollar and buy as much as gold token as they, they want. But, but how many are prepared to take that risk? Uh, Some people have argued that um, governments move towards gold, gold coins and uh, <coughs> gold backed tokens is a sign that they have no confidence in the local currency is, does that make sense it makes a lot of sense because i would have wanted to see was well, that's the digital currency now 
I would have wanted to see government uh, building reserves uh, to support the Zimbabwean dollar. Uh, now they are moving into a digital currency and you can now transact with it. And that's where it becomes a digital currency, where there's an app and you can go into shop and pay and there will be a rate for that. It shows also confusion at its maximum that uh, you are actually sending signals uh, to market that you don't know where you stand. On one end, you say you want to promote the use of Zimbabwean dollar. On another end, you are now introducing another currency uh, which should compete with the Zimbabwean dollar and uh, the US dollar, and it becomes the third currency. So, if it is a patient who is being given this kind of medication, who die of too much dose of medicine because it's not even helping the, the system of the human being. Now, government, well, through its agencies, uh, set out to, to find uh, who to blame or who is behind um, the price hike. And the Competition Tariffs uh, Council was also a part of it. And it appears it's blaming government. Yeah. The government has said business is playing politics. Yeah. I, I saw the report. I saw the, the news. And uh, we concur that uh, money supply is a real problem. And that's where I started. Uh, our challenge, we can go to debate for hours, but it comes to one challenge. It's a monetary phenomena. And, uh, and who print the money is government. Um, last year, mid-year, we had about $1 trillion uh, total money supply in the market uh, by December. And the rate was around 500 in June 2022. By December, we had $2.3 trillion. Right? And uh, the rate was 1.2. So you see, the rate moved by 100% from uh, June to, 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 to December. Uh, government has stopped the releasing figures on, on money supply. The last figure they released was February, which was almost $3 trillion, uh, which is $700 billion increase within uh, two months. Is that business? That's not business. Uh, it's government printing money. So we, what is happening now between February and June is only God who knows. But I will be forgiven to think that the money supply is over $4 trillion. Because if it rose by $700 billion within two months, where is it now? But what is pushing this demand? What is pushing this demand to print more money from government? Mostly statutory obligations uh, because government, when they, uh, um, they export retention, remember it, it initially it was 40%. And when government uh, liquidate the 40% of, of exports, so we are celebrating exports, but 40% is liquidated at an official rate and the government has to print the money for that. And because central bank, I, if central bank had been given a budget by the Minister of Finance, it would have avoided, we would have avoided printing money. The second one was domestic uh, extension when we deposit foreign currency. So initially it was 20%. Uh, then it was 15 percent, then it was scrapped. Uh, the export retention, the correct stage now is now 25 percent. But at, at each stage, government prints money, so they are still printing the 25 percent of exports into Zimbabwean dollar. But also, I would want to argue, with over and above uh, printing of money, there is also excess liquidity, uh, which was the essence of my argument on 25 November on my Twitter, where I was saying the budget of 4.5 trillion dollars is massive. Is going to be a destabilizing factor because when you pay contractors and other service providers, they will be so liquid and they go in the black market uh, to buy foreign currency. Right? Um, now, Ministry of Finance also failed because they had to um, pay it once it, it, it go, they won't pay like uh, in, in, in a staggered manner, they would pay like one time. And what, what it does, it, 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 it pushes the money, there will be so much money in the market, and people will buy foreign currency. I advised government to raise the payments which are going to contractors in US dollars. So we reduce excess liquidity in the market. And we've not heard anything coming out of government on that note. Go government actually blames you of being the dooms, the naysayer. The, the, I mean, I, I, I saw the exchange that you're having with presidential spokesperson Joe Charamba yeah. and, and he was saying that you are so quick and, and enjoy the 
the demis of, of the zero dollar. You're, you're the undertaker. <laughs> it's unfortunate because I'm, uh, I'm a Zimbabwean just like you. So I send my kids to school. Uh, I go in the same shops. I reminded George in that Twitter that he uh, check my recommendations. And it didn't take a week. I reminded him of the recommendation I gave to Central Bank Governor to scrape the 15% uh, export, a uh, domestic for, uh, ex deposit of foreign currency uh, retention. W you know, you, 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 when someone is depositing foreign currency in the bank, you take 15%. You are discouraging. So I reminded him that uh, far from it. But I will remind the government, but that's my duty. It's like I'm, a, I'm just like you. You, you, you. Don't create news for me. But my job is to advise. I'm a technocrat, I'm an academic, and uh, I should always speak. So when you check, whenever I submit my points, even here, I always give a recommendation to say, this is where we are. And if you check on the 25th November, I said the budget is a, is a bad one, and we should reduce uh, excessive money supply. Uh, how do we do it? We should scrape export retentions. I said, at this stage now, there's no need for government to hold export retentions. Because we're not doing rest. Everyone must go in the market and sell and get foreign currency. Why do you want to hold foreign currency to put into an inefficient auction system? Yet people are already, you're talking about 80%. So why do you want to use the auction system for? I've given recommendations. So those are moves to try to uh, kind of weaken and of course, the office which he carries is quite a, a big office. But I think what you need to understand is that he needs people like us because government cannot see its own fault. Eh? Government needs some second voice kind of validating opinions. And I do it out of uh, what I can call uh, being economic patriot. And uh, we love our country. And I hope at one point we'll find each other. Uh, but um, look, as, as you speak about this advice and saying that government cannot see its own mistake. Mm -hmm. um, President Emerson Mnanga yeah, in, in a column um, that is published in state media um, said that the business are acting as a decision and therefore they will be received a response that is political. How, what does this do to business? Look, uh, it's worrying. It's worrying, obviously, the president was misinformed in terms of the root causes. Because he wrote, but I know he, <laughs> by any imagination, uh, he, he will be helped by the advisors, his advisors, to put that kind of piece of article. It was quite thorough, and there were a number of things which I found quite interesting in terms of his understanding of the economy. But I would want to say that um, business is like a baby who is now crying. And uh, the parent is now saying, you are making too much noise. But the baby is crying because he's being uh, beaten by the parent. Follow what I'm saying. So stop beating the baby. There won't be any noise. So now what is now happening, where I also want to reaffirm my point when I say there's no return back. We are going all the way to the graves. We are now into forward pricing, uh, which has never happened before. Because if I was going to ask you, when did we witness a ramba the forward pricing? We could say in the last month or so. Going back, we were not much into forward pricing. Forward pricing is a characterization which is being observed when business is now trying to fight to preserve value. This is the extreme level. Why are we here? And I want to remind our president and his advisor that it's money supply. Uh, it's um, distortions in the markets. Uh, when, you have, uh, when the auction was launched, my submission was that let's adhere to the Dutch auction system. And there are three key principles which you must respect. You must adv advise of the envelope which you have before the auction. And you know what we once said on this program, you must advise on, you must make sure that the highest bidder uh, price becomes the exchange rate, not weighted average. Uh, Dara, you can't go to the auction market. It's, a, it's the same. And say you are bidding for a goat. Then you say, let's take a weighted average. It has never happened in the market. It's as it's, it's, it's basic as that. Car auction. The highest bidder, that's the price, it gets the, 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 the car. And uh, you get it immediately. And when you say immediately, in financial markets, it's, it's 48 hours <laughs> latest. But our auction system was taking uh, six, six, six months. So we kind of built in this challenge from, from June 20, July 2020. 
and uh, we are building a disease uh, in terms of that distortion. I spoke about we need the market system in agriculture. I was moving against the idea of command agriculture because command agriculture distorts uh, the value chain performance. Uh, players in the value chain of soybean, of maize, of wheat, the, I'm talking about actors, your millers and your processors, they will not they will find it difficult to, com to compete properly or to structure deals and contracts with farmers who are getting free inputs. That is why you see in this country that where there's no government, say in the tobacco sector, we have ex-tobacco and we are in top five in the world in terms of export of tobacco. We are top five in the world. In Africa, we are number one. But there's no government. But there are key players in the value chain who are funding it. The same farmers who are growing tobacco can grow maize, enough maize for us. The same farmer who can grow, who, who want to who, who grow tobacco can grow enough soybean for us. We are importing soybean. Those are the signs and the results. And I want to be very clear emphatically that when you have controlled command economics in agriculture, that's what we get. Why, 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 why am I raising this? Is I'm trying to bring you in. I'm raising it because our currents is also affected by production issues. Because I'm saying it's a mandatory phenomenon. But the production, if we're productive, our currents will also be strong because we'll be, it, it, it will be supported by production. So that is where we are. And that is not business. My last but, comment, but, my last comment. But, if if, if but they want to crack... Uh -huh. They supported productivity, hasn't it? We have, um, we have wheat that's supported by government. Massive harvest. Um, we, we've got, we, we, we have got maize. We are self-sufficient in that area. This is command agriculture. How many times are we self-sufficient? How many times? Only one time, like this last winter, winter season for the wheat. But um, how long is it going to last? We'll wait and see. Remember, in 2017, we were also self-sufficient. 2017, uh, because of command agriculture. Uh, but the point I want to ask you, what is the value for money we are putting in there? How much billions we are putting in there? And what are we getting the return on investment? We are producing one ton per hectare. In Sadak, they are producing five tons per hectare. And I'm talking about average. I'm not talking about the one farmer. I'm talking national average. One ton per hectare. In some cases, we produce 0.54 tons. Half a ton per hectare. But we are putting a lot of money. So are you going to, just like if you are a farmer, you spend more money producing one ton, uh, yet you should be. Sometimes it's better to go and buy. So... Sometimes we celebrate success, but we need to see value for man. We have put in billions and billions and billions and we get nothing. As long as the yields are one ton for me, uh, even if we are self-sufficient, we have wasted money. Now, now, what is it that can be done going forward, you know, um, to ensure that things get better for all of us? Because salaries don't mean anything. Savings, mm -hmm. if they are not in United States dollars, mm -hmm. don't mean anything. Right. Hardly do we have, do we have sufficient savings in Kenya? Right. So the starting point is that uh, we need the national dialogue. I would want to advise government to avoid uh, threats. I have seen threats, and I have seen the result of threats. I can remind you of 25 June 2007. When government uh, threw a ministerial task force, which was set up by the late president, uh, President Mugabe, which had 18 ministers, which was chaired by the by now the president, uh, Comrade Idim Nangagwa, he was the minister who was chairing this task force. On that day, on, twi on 25 June, um, they have uh, they asked the business to go back to the price of 18 June. So it was 25 June. They asked the business to go back to the price of what? 18 June, and they cracked on the business. And what was the result? Shelves had nothing. They were Maputi and the tissues. So let's go for national dialogue, where we then discuss what we are doing. And we have a proper presentation to say, why are we where we are? Who was responsible? But uh, I would think that one of the outcomes of that national dialogue is to dollarize. Because I don't think we have enough arsenal to rein in inflation. Um, <laughs> where we are in, and even the exchange rate because I think we've, we've lost control. The level of money, of money supply and liquidity, we can't just move it out. We have a budget which is being implemented. We can't reverse that. Uh, but uh, we can have US dollar uh, economy. Uh, we then agree to say, how do we get out of it? How do we address these challenges? And I'm saying no, 
to 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 to, to threats. Government does not have enough ammunition in their hands right now to put order. Uh, they, even if they want to arrest, I've seen even in the news that if uh, management has been arrested. But how do you arrest an informal sector which has got over five million people? Where are the jails to put those people? Where are the policemen to arrest five million people? Why didn't they just uh, by, by arresting their own deputy minister and the minister of agriculture in the minister of industry and commerce? So it tells you this is a challenge which is which can be arrest, addressed by arresting people. We can't enforce statutory instruments right now because you have seen what it has done to eggs, price of eggs. Statutory instrument 33 it requires business to use official exchange rate. But what is happening, the cost of prices in Zim dollar is increasing. So if you divide by the official exchange rate, the price will be times two, the ideal price. That's why you see eggs are going for about um, $11 per crate. Yet they should be between $3.50 and $4 because the rates are, uh, are times two in the black market. That's why you see the, 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 the truck shops have got cheaper prices than the retail by, by in a double by, by, by times two cheaper. Why? Because they are using the correct exchange rate, which is in the black market, and they are not worried about that. Afraid of being uh, arrested. Now, now, now talking about that, government has actually accused business of feeding the informal sector with products and. And, and, and you see this, you know, you see this mm. amazingly. Mm. When you walk into um, a formal supermarket, yeah. just outside, mm -hmm. all the products that are being sold inside are outside mm -hmm. at cheaper prices, but in US. Yeah, so, so those are survival strategies which I talked about. And I would not want to say that that's not correct. Even if myself, I was running a business, I will not give commodity to a, to, to, to blessed uh, supermarket. We are going to put your prices in US dollars using an official exchange rate, which will double the price, and you can't move my sales. And I'm running a business. I have a loan obligation. I have workers to pay. I will put, I will put them to agents. And there's no crime. I, would, I don't even understand why they're making noise. If I can go to a manufacturer as a person to say, I want to buy these commodities and put them in the, in the market, what is wrong with that? I'm selling, am I selling uh, banje? So I'm, it's a survivor. Let's address the root cause. Why is the informal sector being flooded? But don't forget, the same business, same government, they opened uh, borders for eleven products, right? What were they trying to do? To fix business. Business is reacting. Is also pushing their commodities in a market where it is competitive for them on the back of the right. It's survival. The gloves are off. So why are you complaining? You take off your gloves. I take off my glove for survival. Why are you complaining? I, I've also spoken to other uh, people in the informal sector. And, and they say that they simply buy, they walk into a supermarket, mm -hmm. they buy using the local currency, mm -hmm. and, and they take the products and put them by the pavement and begin Correct. to sell them in in United States mm -hmm. dollars because mm -hmm. tomorrow the prices in the shop will have gone up mm -hmm. but they would have benefited from it, that's the other side of it which is on the back of the exchange rate but they can only buy zim dollar prices they can't buy US dollars because US dollars are very expensive but if they change uh, the US dollars into zim dollars uh, they can uh, comfortably buy the goods from the shops but it, that's, that, 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 that's, that's not quite profitable. The easiest way is to go to the manufacturer and they buy and pay cash and they get discounts. And that's what is happening. Is, is there, a, I mean, you talk about national dialogue and stuff like that, but is there an easy, quick fix? Because, because, because what will people be doing at a national dialogue when they know the problem, right? So the easy quick fix is to dollarize, as I've said it, and I said it again on 11 May, that uh, the immediate solution, go and check on my Twitter, on, th on, on thread number 9, I said that the immediate solution is to dollarize. Anything which government is going to do is putting lipstick on a frog to make it beautiful. It's on my Twitter. The immediate solution is to dollarize. In any way, you know, why, why, what I like about dollarization is uh, out of 33 countries which dollarized, it was, the government never dollarized. It was the market. Even here where we are, we have dollarized. 
we just have a small share in Zim dollar. So it's a matter of a time now where you see that it, where we are, where you see the price of meat going for 66,000 dollars a kg. What does it tell you? It tells you don't buy me in Zim dollar. <laughs> because even if you have uh, that amount of money, you better go and change that money and get US dollars. So no one will buy it in Zim dollar. Uh, so the solution is to do rise. Government say we don't want, but that's not their choice. Every time, even Minister of Finance, uh, Professor Mtutu on 25 June 2020, he introduced Zim dollar. And I was the first person to discuss with the, on that matter on a public media, in a local media, on the radio, where I said, March 20, uh, this was 29, this was 2019 actually, June. And I said, in March 2020. And I, was, I remember I even said on your platform, we'll be going back to US dollar. And it happened, March 2020. I can, I can see government cannot control current, current the, that the, it is not the area. There's a threat that, you know, there, there have been threats that the government is going to just shut out the US dollar and say everyone trade in RTGS, the local currency. Is that possible? If they, they have some bit of, ad, if they take approach to, to learn, what happened before? They can't do it. It will be like Dr. Gono's uh, beer checks, which, which he printed and the market rejected them. At this stage, government has no power to announce any radical measures outside what the market wants. The market wants the use of US dollar. And I would want you to ask me, uh, call me for an interview if they do it. They will not succeed. They will not succeed because we are here because the market is the best constitutional court of economics. It's not the government. Government desires. But uh, that's why you even see that um, because they've gone through this cycle a number of times, market also understand. I just remind you that on 25 June 2019, the Minister of Finance was coming from Mozambique. He announced Zim dollar by force. Nine months, we went back to US dollar. But then the economy was a bit stable. But where we are here, we are in chaos. This is chaos. They cannot announce Zim dollar. Some, some have said that this is an attempt to force regime change in this <laughs> Then the government was causing regime change for itself. <laughs> because they were printing money, excess liquidity, they refused to, to have an efficient auction system, so they were causing regime change for themselves. If there is anyone who is causing regime change. Because we need to understand what is driving the red. Where are we where we are? You can't say when you've caused a havoc, you've caused a storm, and the people are trying to survive the storm. And you are now asking me why am I swimming in the water? But you brought the water for me. So do you want me to sink? I will swim to the safe uh, areas. That's what is happening. When you see forward pricing, it's swimming to safe areas. When you see the market dollars and rejecting the Zim dollar, it's swimming. Because remember, government has no capacity to compensate the business. Business lost their money, we lost our pensions, we lost our savings, we lost everything, and they can't compensate. So you want a, me to lose money twice again because there's a storm, which is caused by government. We will swim to safe areas. So I, that's why I like the Deputy Minister of Industry and Commerce. That he, he is doing exactly what he is doing, but is he, is he not government? He's swimming to safe areas. Now, how, how much, you, you're talking about people who are in business, most of this um, political muscle and connection. Mm. Now, if, if we are to listen to, to this uh, theory mm. that business is trying to force out Zanupia from power. Mm. Now, when you say that most of those who have, who have business and who are influential, of political muscle is this an internal shift there no it's not an internal shift i was just giving an analogy that um if we want to believe that things are happening because one wants regime change then the one who is afraid of the regime change is one who is causing regime change it was an analogy but uh, i would want to say that the argument that you want to force other people out of power is, is a wrong argument how in business there's what is called the replacement pricing 
when you put stocks in your business and you put them on the shelf, you must price them in a manner that you must be able to replace them. So if the rate is going up, uh, if it is still stable, I'll use the current rate because I know that it will stay there for three, four days. When I get my money, I can change the money and replace. But if the prices are changing every day, basic economic theory tells you use forward pricing because you want to be ahead. So when it is changing, you, you are covered and you are able to replace your stock. It's economics. It's not anything. It has nothing to do with the PF being taken out of power. It has nothing to do with someone wanting to cause regime change. Uh, it is purely economics. And uh, the challenge which you have in life, and if you don't accept that we have a problem and how it is manifested and we don't have a shared responsibility, we don't have a solution. Now, Professor, um, this, this thing, we're talking about business being protecting its, its, its interest. But who's protecting the interest of the workers? Because most business, even those who are charging United States dollars and collecting United States dollars, are still insisting on paying the local currency. And, and they are not changing the salaries as fast as they are changing the prices. So the workers and the consumers are the casualties of, of this uh, pandemonium. We're in a storm. Um, so they suffer. I indirect with the business executives across uh, the, uh, the, 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 the board, uh, listed companies and uh, non-listed companies, uh, several, one on one. I can tell you that uh, I have it on good authority that uh, they are finding it very difficult to meet their obligations, including the salaries uh, as low as they are. So, Politicians sometimes they speak from a point of emotions that they can be sympathized with. But when you talk to businesses, I am aware of businesses which are cutting salaries of workers and executives, general workers and executives, instead of raising them. Right? So, this is a fact. When you have a chronic and hyperinflation, uh, the mainstream workers, they are they lose out. Consumers, they lose out. The shareholder lose out. The last man to lose out actually is the government in terms of uh, uh, the, the line of uh, falling. Who is falling first? But they are afraid of falling before even they fall. Some have already fallen. <laughs> so we must always learn this. And uh, I don't think at this stage we can have uh, an equitable solution. It's a survival mode. There is serious retrenchment going on right now. Demand is not there. And you know, now ask me, there is excess liquidity, but there is no demand. Where is the money? Those who are connected, politically connected, have the money. They are buying foreign currency and they are stashing it. So, how then do you blame the business? The, the fortunate thing, I am not a business person. So, I'm not defending my constituents. I'm just speaking from a point of independence and observation. Um, if everything was fair, even if those who are earning condo, government should be actually investigating contractors. So where are you putting the money you are giving you? Where is there no demand? Because they are the biggest spender in, in, the, in the economy. Why is there no demand? They are not looking at that. Because some of them are their colleagues. So we will never get a solution once we take the blame game, as I said before. <coughs> An election is coming. Do you think that this is going to be a major election question. It is, it is. You know, when people are, are, are going to be voting, the, the reason using their term is. Uh, and obviously, when you are putting government into office, I think it's only fair that uh, every electorate will have to review how they are, uh, when you look at options available, how have you performed in the and, last five years. And, and, and do you think that this government has the capacity to correct this mistake? Normally, it's very difficult for mistakes which, which were made by a person to be corrected by the same person. Um, I'm saying so because we now have 25 years of uh, economic challenges. I would want to take you back to 14 November 1997 when we had the Black Friday. 
what caused it? It was printing of money to pay off veterans and budget money. And the Zimbabwean drug crashed. We continued with the madness. We went in DRC, 1998. We were funding a war in the region and we came with nothing. That's our government. We continued. We went on land reform, political as it is. Let's leave it, whether it was good or not. But at the point, it was not well organized. And uh, from early 2000 to date, we are printing money. From, night, from 14 November 1997, we are printing money. 25 years. So if I sit here, I cannot give you a guarantee that uh, ZANPF government uh, can solve the problem which you are facing because the popularly known as the decade, lost decade of 1998 to 2008 is repeating itself as you mentioned in your introduction Max. And we did not learn anything in those 10 years. We, we thought we found a formula during the government five years but when we got out of it you know we got out of unit government when honorable bt had a surplus of a budget of 250 million dollars because he said we eat what we kill but when we then started the 2013 with minister shinamasa as a minister of finance he drove national debt from zero to 9.4 billion dollars into 2018 national debt it was in us dollars what saved that debt to go down to nothing was the the tricks which were made by the minister of finance when we crossed over to zim dollar and he crossed over 81 to one so that debt became nothing but uh, we have continued on this path of printing money and as i said it's a mandatory phenomena it's a, the way we structure our markets so and uh, my challenge now is that when you even speak as, gov as, 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 as analysts and even this platform there are clearly platforms for debate to give advice to government for free you would see when you go on Twitter, when it is captured by your, my brother, uh, George uh, Jaramba, they will arm twist it to make it. And sometimes if you are faint hearted, you, you stop commenting. But some of us, we, we, we have a calling, we will not be faint hearted. But the point I'm making, government is not open even to objective uh, discussions. Uh, I'm aware there are meetings which are being done by the Minister of Industry and Commerce to solve a solution to these challenges. I'm not invited. I'm not, I'm not a gate crusher. I'm not a hungry to be invited. But I know we are going to be discussing a, a rate, exchange rate, and inflation, which, which is a remnant of price increases. Uh, we, to discuss challenge which, which you are seeing today, which I saw in, in 25 November to 2022, and you don't bring the person into the discussion and say, what are the solutions? Because you, 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 are, you, you, are, you have a, a big mouth. We don't want you here. So culture, you know, the president, I like President Nangagwa's approach when he's commenting on public domain to say, we are listening government. We are give servant leadership. But when you look at his ministers, they don't give servant leadership. They are, they are quite allergic uh, to alternative views. So I, if they continue on this path, I'm sorry to say that if they come back as NPF after elections, Aluda continue. Same problems will continue. Thank you very much, Prof, uh, for your time. <coughs> and thank you very much for joining us on this, the Free Talking Power Partnership with the Frederick Newman Foundation. But before we leave, Prof, maybe you have some words of, of wisdom that you'd want to share with our viewers, with business and with government. Right. So I would want to say to business first that um, uh, business is being blamed uh, for being saboteurs. I... I think it's only fair for business to put together a paper uh, which they take to government to explain uh, the state of affairs in the economy and what are the challenges they are facing uh, to avoid the uh, challenge of uh, uh, 25 uh, June 2007 uh, where government had to crack the businesses and anyway, nothing in the shops and also business lost capital. So I think gone are the days where business becomes uh, angels and they don't want to put papers and they want, do not want to, to sit down with government. Uh, to, but also to um, also advise government that uh, dialogue is also always important. Confrontational approach is not good. Some of the prices which you are seeing in the markets are, for example, where you see the forward rates. Yes, I understand the concept of forward rates without contradiction. I don't, I don't contradict.
but I think some of them are kind of on the uh, uh, west side. Uh, but to government, I think my advice is very simple. Government um, must look at the challenges in the economy at a 360 degree. Government must never resort to blame game and uh, put a lot of energy on a, a narrow uh, way of viewing things. Uh, the market is very stubborn. The market will not uh, listen to politics, but the market listen to economics. The best constitutional court of the economy uh, is the market. Uh, so government must always uh, um, uh, have a degree and must consult. I would want to argue that the alternative voices are not bad. They are your mirror. Uh, it's always important to bring uh, those voices uh, in the room. I, I would want a situation in the future where we speak with one voice to say, we had a meeting and this is what we have agreed and we believe the future will, will be positive. But I have not had that opportunity except the parliament a uh, number of times, but I, of course I know in the parliament I'm no longer uh, wanted to be seen in the parliament because of the alternative voices. But uh, uh, the, the, the command economics in the com uh, auction system do not work. Uh, the command economics uh, in the construction sector uh, is creating challenges. We need a market-led uh, approach in every sector. The command economics in the pricing of commodities, uh, which we are seeing where prices are being set by government, uh, does not work. I think let's have a look at lessons from tobacco. No command economics, it's free market. Yes, there are challenges that the auction system is now being reduced since 25% of the tobacco is going to the auction. Most of it is now to do contracting. It's now an issue of strengthening institutions to support the market. At this moment, the silver bullet for government is to dollarize. I don't see any other way out. Let's dollarize. If the government doesn't want to dollarize, the market will do it for, for them as we are actually approaching the, the, the dead end of this moment dollar. I thank you. Thank, thank you very much, um, Professor Mgan, for, for, for having us and, and for talking to us. Now, <clears throat> where the economy is not working, social services suffer. People cannot afford hospitals. They cannot afford education. And this is what builds the future of a nation. An educated people, a healthy people. Workers are going to work, but they are not fairly paid. The Constitution actually talks about fair remuneration for fair work. This is not happening. Now, it is us as Zimbabwe, we need to come together and proffer a solution to our own problems and make sure that we as Zimbabwe sit on the table of nations and I recognize not pitted upon. This is the free talk. With me, your host as usual, Dara Blessed Mklanga, in proud partnership with the Frederick Newman Foundation here on Heart and Soul TV and Radio, your alternative voice. Prof, your alternative voice will always have a home <laughs> here at Heart and Soul TV and Radio. Thank you. Our partnership with our partners, Frederick Newman Foundation. Now, until next time, thank you very much for joining us and thank you for choosing us as your station of choice. I'm out. Yeah.